Good morning, everyone. Hope you are doing well. Today is Wednesday, April 1st, and today we are going to be going over some information about Hernan Cortez. I hope you are doing well and that you're having a good morning, even in spite of the fact that there is more snow on the ground. I know it's supposed to be spring, but I mean, for some reason, the snow just keeps falling. <laughs> anyway, so um, today, like I said, we're going to be continuing to talk about Hernan Cortez. So going to be answering the questions, who is Hernan Cortez? Um, where did he first come to Mexico? How did he get there? What was motivating him? Okay. So we're going to be going over all of this information today. So everyone, Okay, so everyone, very simply, Hernan Cortez was a conquistador. So the word conquistador means basically a Spanish explorer, okay? So he uh, was born in 1485 in Medellin and died on December 2nd in 1547. He was the leader of this group of Spanish troops called the conquistadors. And so he believed that res results of the Spanish Inquisition, remember the Spanish Inquisition was the system of courts that put all of the non-Christians on trial and um, that ended up chasing many Muslims and Jews out of Spain um, if they refuse to convert to Christianity. And so he believed that the Spanish Inquisition made Spain a better place. Sorry, everyone, I just moved to the wrong side. So he was an adventurous and ambitious young man, and he was curious about the stories of gold that Columbus had passed on. So Columbus, of course, had went on these journeys before and Hernan Cortez basically grew up looking up to Christopher Columbus and so um, he wanted to be an explorer so at 19 he set sail across the Atlantic to what was known as the New World and of course that would be present-day um, South and Central America okay so in many ways, Cortez, he embodied the Spanish worldview of his time. And so the Spanish worldview, you remember the four key um, characteristics. So the desire to geography, so wanting to explore new lands, um, gold, wanting to go and seek more gold, glory, wanting fame from the journeys that he would go on. And then, of course, um, God, so wanting to spread Christianity to new places. So he believed that the Caribbean would be a good place to make his fortune. So he was immediately given a large farm in Hispaniola. So Hispaniola is basically modern day Haiti, Dominican Republic. And so he was given a large farm by the governor in 1504. Although it was a very nice gesture, Cortez wasn't very impressed because he told him, I just came to get cold. So you can see how that relates back to the Spanish worldview again, the desire that they just wanted gold, um, more land at this time. Um, although he was given land, so I'm not sure why he wasn't exactly pleased with that. I guess he wanted gold more than land. So he was then asked to join an expedition to conquer Cuba. So you can see Cuba here. So he initially landed here, Haiti in the Dominican Republic. He would have landed somewhere around here. And then he went on his ship over to Cuba. And so with just 300 men, the Spanish conquered the island using their unusual formula. So um, you can see Cortez's route to conquering the Aztec Empire. He comes to Cuba. And so he was sent by Spain to find gold in New Land in 1519. He came to Cuba. He went this way, went around uh, by the Yucatan Peninsula. So if you think of where um, modern day Cancun and all those places are, that would be the Yucatan. And so he went through across Mexico all the way back down and then ended up back to down here at Honduras. So he discovered the land of the Aztecs, took over it. Um, and then Hernando, he has a big impact on today because it reminds us that Spain was powerful in lands and riches as in gold and Jews. Um, and then he faced a war against the Aztecs in Mexico in their territory and he won. He also discovered gold and jewels, okay? So Aztec Empire was here and so that was one of his main crusades when he came from Spain. Okay, so everyone. So how did he do this? How was he so successful? How did he end up defeating all of, defeating this powerful, powerful empire? Well, an expedition would set out from a recent colony. 
What they would do is land in a new region and they would friend the first indigenous people that they met in order to find out who was the most powerful. So um, Hernan Cortez would have came to uh, Mexico. He would have found the indigenous tribes that were located outside the Aztecs. He would have wanted to, he would have asked them for more information. And so they probably would have told them about this big, powerful Aztec empire. And so then the Spanish invited the leaders of the powerful groups to a meeting. Then they seized them and threatened to kill them if they did not obey. So this goes back to our video where he invites Moctezuma to a meeting and then takes him captive. And then any fights were fought in the open. Spanish weapons and horses gave them an advantage. Remember in the video, we saw that the Spanish had the metal weapons versus the Aztecs had the wooden uh, weapons and the Aztecs fought on foot versus the Spanish had the horses. So you can see who would have the advantage in that scenario. And then the leader of the expedition would become the governor of the new colony. So he would become, so Hernan Cortez would become the leader of the new colony and then his second in command would lead the next ex expedition. The indigenous people were forced into slavery, okay? Okay, so everyone, this is when we get to two images of Cortez. So read voices to images of Cortez found on page 19 of your textbook. And so what I'd like you to do is take a look at these two pictures and think about the details. What do you notice about these pictures? Why do you think the images are so different? And this is something that we're going to discuss during our Google Meet. Um, okay, so everyone. Uh, so everyone, thank you so much. That's all for today. We will continue talking about these slides in my next little presentation next time. Okay, stop sharing. Okay, okay. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you next time in the next edition of uh, Larissa's Home Learning, where we talk more about the Spanish and the Aztecs and what happens when they interact.